What is up, suspenseful fishing fans? Today is like 55 degrees and sunny. As you can tell, it's, it's a pretty great day, you know. Um, just let me get my car here. Uh, holy smokes, is it steaming hot or what, dude? I don't know if that's because of me or it's just the sun, you know. Okay, I gotta roll some windows down here, dude. Alright. Yeah, we're gonna roll some windows down because you know it's hot as fuck in here. So, turn it off. Alright, folks. Ah, uh, if I can get this kickstand out. What I want to talk to you guys today about was some pretty neat stuff. Fuck, I can't get this kickstand to work. Okay, we're just gonna do it down here. Alright, so, you guys probably saw my first video on a day box, and like what I would use for day boxes, um, what I would put in a day box, by the way I'm at Ponderosa if you don't know, I just got out of my job, um, it's smoking hot, it's like 55 degrees, 60 degrees out right now, it's crazy warm, um, but anyway, we're going to talk about the day box, my newest addition. Right now. And that is what I like to call my day box. So, some first things I'm going to go through are that this is a multi species angler box. So, that, that basically means you can use them anywhere where fish are. So, basically, what I decided to do is pack this box full of everything that I would need for a fishing, a pond, a creek, a stream, uh, even rivers, you know. If you're fishing rivers, you're going to need some of this stuff, obviously. So I try to comp comprise it into one single box. I can see this freaking thing glowing right now. It's crazy, dude. Um, first things I have are... For panfish, I have like grubs about that size, like two inch grubs pretty much, two three inch grubs, um, and then for also for panfish, I have these. You can also use them for small river bass, these little uh, swim baits, styled baits, um, and then with those, I usually group them with one of these grubs in here. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. Um, if I can get in here, because I got so much, see what, what I usually do is I bring a chartreuse jig with a red eye, usually help, and that's one eighth ounce, then I bring these, which are one fourth ounce weights, um, and I got these, uh, little tiny guys, which are just about one sixteenth of an ounce, if you can believe that or not. These are one sixteenth of an ounce. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's another red eyed one. Red eyed baddie. Yeah, that's one sixteenth. Um, and then, or maybe, maybe those, maybe those, I think those are three thirty seconds. Um, and then these. Are the one eighth. Anyway, what I do is I usually just like, you know, a lot of people say that if you rig it this way, it'll have a lot of action, a lot of kicking action, because you can see that tail right there. What I do is I usually just like start right in the center, work it on there, and that bait really good, and then push it on just like that so you can see that right there that's basically the small swim bait style that I use and then some other things I use okay so I'm gonna go through the colors that I use for panfish I use orange 
like a dark umber color um chartreuse by the way you can buy all these colors in a like a kit i guess you could say at a walmart for like eight about eight dollars you know so i thought that was pretty neat um there's a few other colors i use white clear crystal clear ones without any glitter and then i use one with black and glitter those are my six main colors I use. And then, I like to keep a few of these cra Mr. Crappy Roadrunners in my box. Like for, basically, it's springtime when it's it's still a little bit cold out. You can probably tell. It's like, it's like kind of like a mixture between a tube, and it's got this horse head jig on there, with a little underspin. Those work really good. I got those in chartreuse green and then a perfect white color. Now, if you if you watch my channel, you might notice that I tend to talk about grubs and stuff a lot. So I packed a few goodies in here. These are the first goodie I got for y'all is a is a K-Lines five inch grub. It's, it's a full five inches there, I guess. Maybe four inch. I don't know. I think that's five inch. But I put these sometimes on football heads. Or uh, what I like to do is I use gopher tackle mushroom head. One, six, one sixteenth ounce or one eighth ounce. Depending on what they ask for, the fish are asking for. By another way. By, by the way, uh, another soft plastic that I like to use is a culprit grubs this is fire tiger pattern i use these for like the saginaw river area pretty good usually most of the time when i'm fishing that kind of stuff like with jigs small jigs i use one of these bobbers that way i know if i have a bite because my rod is like very not that sensitive it's a very stiff rod as i use for like all my fish species then the second one i have second grub is a this isn't a Mr. Twister, but it's a it's an Apex grub. Yeah, it's it's all good with the juices and everything. This one's the same as the other one, five incher. Those tend to be my staple for like summertime and stuff like that. Now, uh, going into some other hard baits like or soft baits, I have Johnson Beetle spins. These Johnson Beetle spins are terrific. Like. I've caught so many panfish, and on this one fourth ounce, I've caught a lot of bass on. Um, you know, look, I'll take this off just to show you guys. I I use it with the spinner part right here, or without. Either which way, you're still gonna catch a panfish or a small bass. Just depends on how you jerk the work, you know. Work the jerk. Some other jigs I got. Like I said, mainly this whole entire box is been basically jigs. I have these marabou jigs. I see those. I got them in green, white. White is a really good color for musky and pike if you're catching smaller ones like that, like this. Look at that fucker, man. It's like so huge. And then red and white. Red jig head with the white tail, body, and then another one I had is yellow, yellow, that one, that one got bit too, so, you know, all depends on where you're fishing, what you're doing, you know, and all that good shit, um, now I'm gonna get into the spinners, now my spinners I use for pike, pike are very natural around here, like, we, we get them a lot in Michigan, up the rivers, up the creeks, you know, basically wherever... A lot of bait fish are present. So basically what I like to do is for my main spinners that I use are the rooster tail, warden's rooster tail. And that's a white one. That one's I think this is yeah, this is a one fourth ounce one. And then I don't think it's a warden's, I think it's a Yakima. 
Yakima, Yakima, something like that. And then I got this Fire Tiger slash Trout pattern one. I don't know if you can see that or not. By the way, it's been sunny for the past like five or even three days now. I'm actually pretty pumped about it. Now the thing about these rooster tail ones by Yakima is uh they have they're mainly just like a search bait. Like if you're going by weeds and stuff like that, or if you're fishing like beds with panfish, stuff like that. And what this does is this blade it actually has a lot more flash than any other bait I've used. Besides the, um, what are those things called? Blue Fox Vibrax. Blue Fox Vibrax, I catch one on those things every time. A big old pike. Um, now you might be saying to yourself, this is a little small for a pike, right? Well, yes, because some of the pike we have, like in state park fisheries and stuff like that, I usually, like use those because they're the pike in there are like well, I think I'd say like the average size is like 20 inches yeah they're not big but I mean they're the numbers is what counts and they got a lot of a lot of pike in there um the other spinner that I have which I was just talking about blue fox vibrax this is the blue fox vibrax I have as you can see, that's basically how it goes through the water column. And if you can see this, it's got these, like, this flashiness on it. If you can see that, that is when I use it when it's full-blown sunny cover. Like, if not sunny cover, what the hell am I even talking about? You're probably wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. But, I use those for basically... when it's really sunny out, bluebird skies type of day, you know, stuff like that. Um, some other spinners I use. Gosh, if I can get them out. Um, I'm trying to get them out right now. Oh, fuck. There we go. Alright, so Two other ones that I use, you might see these in like Myers and Walmart stores like that, like all the time. My go-to one is these two right here. One is silver, and one is fire tiger pattern on it. If you can see that. Yeah, I use those. They're called the Johnson Minnow Spins. These are the one eighth ounce ones. So again, I like to use those for pike a lot, you know, stuff like that, and other creatures of the habit that will bite. Um, I'm going to get in my spoons here. Yeah, if uh, I'm able to get them out here. This first one that I have is a Swedish pimple. This one I use on sunny days, bluebird skies, and everything like that. And the other one is just a regular old spoon. Silver, nothing special about it, as you can tell. Nothing special. And I use those for, like, basically these two just for sunny days. You're only supposed to use a spoon if it's, like, really sunny out. Apparently that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's particularly true, but I catch a fish every day. It's fucking sunny out. So, uh, then my last spoon is a little Cleo, little Cleo Wiggler. It's, uh, what does it say on the back here? A Seneca Lure, or whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce shit, man. But yeah, I, I, I had, I've used this a couple times, but I had the wrong rod for it. Tennessee is, is supposed to be a right rod and a long rod, or whatever the fuck you call it, I don't know. Um, my other soft baits, I don't think I mentioned these to you guys. Alright, so my other soft baits I have are this, it's a get bit tube. 
this I want to say it's like uh, three inch, three inch, three and a half inch uh, can I talk today? Nope, I can't. It's it's a freaking tube. All right, there we go. Finally got it. And I use those mainly when like in springtime on spawning beds cuz bass think they're freaking whatever the hell they think they are. I mean, don't really know much. Do I? I guess it's pretty obvious. And uh second thing I have I probably didn't mention to you guys is a spinner bait. This is my staple. This is a one dollar spinner bait from Walmart. Now, as funny as that sounds, this has a willow leaf and an Indiana blade. So, I mean, those are my two staples of the year. I mean, it, produ it produces a lot of flash too. These willow leaf blades, but. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty decent. I wouldn't say they're the best, but if you buy, like, all six of them, all eight of them, or whatever they have there, you can actually build your own combination of lures by making those, by buying those sets. Now I'm gonna, the re, the re, you might be wondering, why do I use these grubs? Well, I don't use these on the freaking, uh, these, these jigs. I use these on my spinner baits. So that's, that's like, basically my staple. But yeah, you might be wondering, how the fuck did you get a spinner bait into a tackle box with only two little squares? Well, I kind of like bent the wire down, you know? So, oh shit. So, uh, it could fit in there. Yeah, that was a little hard time. And then... No, well... I want to go for the terminal tackle. I'll go for the terminal tackle for you. Mainly, I carry two types of hooks. These hooks. These uh, VMC offset shank hooks. Then I carry octopus hooks for... For, uh... Wacky rigging. You might be wondering why. What's so big big about wacky rigging? Well, if you've watched a few of my last videos, I'm really big on wacky rigging. Nico rigs, wacky rigging, Ned rigs. So I carry a lot of Senkos on me when I go fishing, as you'll see later on in this video. Alright, I'm gonna go for the hard baits. First thing I have is a rattle trap. This is a one fourth ounce baby bass color. And, uh, I use those a lot around bridges. Like, if you throw them out and then you reel them upon, like, reel them right across the water column right behind the bridge, the bridge, uh, supports, basically, you'll draw a big bass and walleye out of there real quick. The other lure I use for a lot of my top water scenarios as you might see in some upcoming videos, is a Rebel Popper. Now, this bad boy is not to be underestimated. The paint comes off easily, but it's easily fixable. It's a Rebel Popper, and I get this in, like, frog pattern, stuff like that. So, it's that's, like, pretty, my big thing right there. Um... Another one I use is my Berkeley Flicker Shed. This one is in a like a gold black pattern because bait fish in Saginaw River are naturally colored like basically white. And then I have a Rapala jointed bait. This is the perch pattern bait. You might see, you you would have seen this in my first day box. This one dives, I think, to eight feet. If I'm correct, I think the uh, nine feet, nine feet. Dives down to that depth and uh, stays down there and in the water column and wiggles and warts and everything. 
And then I have the Storm Hot and Tot, one of my favorite lures. Not only is it durable, but this this metal lip right here, it's it's great, dude. I have never seen a bait with a metal lip like that. It's fabulous. And I'm hooking myself. But yeah, they have so many patterns in this. Like, like they have ones like I showed you before with a shimmer on them, so the one that's like really light out. God, I'm dying in here, dude. It's hot as hell. Um, then my main go-to baits for shallow cover, we're in the cold, it's a jerk bait, blue shad, blue silver shad, and then I have some square bills, a coffin bill, this one's the strike king, sexy shad color, for a, for a kind of whatever they call it shallow cover and water and stuff like that. Ah, shit. Here is my third shallow bait, and that is a storm bullet, or I think it's a blaze. It's just a blaze lure, yeah. And it's got that shimmer on it once again, if you can see it. Yeah, it's got that shimmer. And this one's a very wide wheeling one. I don't underestimate it because it's like only $2.99 in the bargain bins at Myers and Walmart. But it's crazy, dude, how well that thing works. And as you guys uh, heard me mention before, the, the whole entire Ned Rig thing. Well, here it is. You got the jig head on one side, and I got the old. Yamamoto bait on the other. I carry three of those with me and some spare Senkos on. Stuff like that, you know. Get y'all excited out there. Some Senkos. That's basically it in my, uh, my box. box and then I'll tell you what I use oh, shit there we go I'll tell you what I use for my soft plastics otherwise they're not in the box and I just carry them in my pocket my coat pocket I'm a really big yum fan so I use a lot of yum stuff first thing I use is craw poppy I got this from Northwoods, as you can see on there, for $2.79. The regular price was $3.49. So that's, but you're basically saving a dollar at Northwoods, dude. And that's what I love about Northwoods, man. They're freaking sick. Freaking sick, dude. And those I use in, like, the springtime and fall. Fall, I use them on the back of football jigs and stuff like that. So, pretty neat. And then my Yum Dinger... Yum Dinger, you know that guys. It's my big staple around here. It's the same thing as a Yeri Gary Yamamoto bait. Um, I get them in the watermelon red flake. You can see here, the dazzling colors. And then I get them in the watermelon green red flake. Um, this one actually is watermelon red flake and black flake. That's why it looks so dark compared to the watermelon seed and all them. But yeah, that's basically what I use, bro. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't li clicked the like and subscribe button below, please do so. That would be great. You'd be doing me a big favor. Thank you guys so much for watching. And peace.